For thousands of years, every morning and evening, Jewish people have prayed these well-known words as a way of expressing their devotion to God. They're called the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And as for you, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. We're going to look at the third key word in this prayer, how Israel is called to love their God. But what does that mean? Love is a very common word in most languages, as it is in ancient Hebrew. It's pronounced ahava. It most basically refers to the kind of affection or care that one person shows another. It sometimes describes physical affection, like the king of Persia's love for Queen Esther. But there are other Hebrew words that more specifically refer to physical desire or sex. Ahava is more broad. So Abraham had ahava for his son Isaac, that's parental love. Jonathan showed ahava for his friend David, that would be brotherly love. In fact, a whole group of people can have ahava for their leader, like when the Israelites showed love for their king David. Ahava can even describe loyalty between political allies, like Hiram, the king of Tyre, loved David. They had good relations, and so Hiram wanted to help David's son Solomon build the temple. These are all different kinds of affection described with the one word, ahava. Now all of this is helpful for understanding God's ahava in the Old Testament. So in Deuteronomy, Moses told the Israelites, God showed affection for you, he chose you because of his ahava for you. So God doesn't love because the Israelites earned it or deserve it. It simply originates from God's own character. He loves because he loves. This is why Jeremiah can say that God's love is everlasting. It has no end because it has no beginning. God's love just is an eternal fact of the universe. And God's love is not a duty, it's a genuine feeling, an affection that God experiences. This is why the prophet Hosea compares God's love for his people to a husband's ahava for his wife, or to a parent showing ahava for their child. It's one of the strongest things that God feels. But that doesn't mean that God's love is just a feeling. God's love is also in action. It's something God chooses to do. Like when Moses says, because of God's ahava for your ancestors, he brought you out of Egypt with great power. God's love isn't just a sentiment, it is something God does. And so, in the Shema, Israel is called to respond to God's ahava by showing ahava in return. And just like God's love, human love is to show itself through actions. Like in Deuteronomy 10, what does the Lord your God ask of you except to fear the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to love him and serve him and to keep his commands? All of these actions are centered around love. If I'm not doing them, I don't actually love God, I just say I do. Which leads to one last thing. In the Old Testament, I show my love for God by how I treat the people around me. In Deuteronomy, we read that God defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow, and he shows ahava for the immigrants among you, giving them food and clothing, and so you also show ahava for the immigrant. So the people are to imitate God's ahava by showing ahava for others. This is the idea underneath the famous line, you shall ahava your neighbor as yourself. And so at the end of the day, all of this is rooted in God's own eternal ahava. Like we read in the New Testament letter of 1 John, we love because God first loved us. And that's the Hebrew word ahava. Hope you're enjoying this word study series we're doing at The Bible Project. We have a lot more coming out and we have a lot more for you to watch. They're at thebibleproject.com. We're a nonprofit, we're crowdfunded by people like you and you can find out how to be involved by going to thebibleproject.com.